this is something that's so embedded in my mind that I really have to speak on it today. Because yesterday we saw another shooting in a church. You know, I, I grew up most of my life believing that places of worship were sanctuaries. They even made movies about it in the old days. If you could make it to the church, you were going to live. Well, no more, no more. Families gathered together in a small Texas town, and a man with a gun went in and killed 26 of them, including an 18-month-old baby, and wounded 20 more. One family lost eight of his cherished members. Think about it. We're about two or three weeks now away from Thanksgiving and followed by Christmas. Eight people that they loved and cherished will not be there because this man had some kind of score to settle or what, heaven knows what was in his mind to do that. But those killed in the attack equaled about 7% of the small town's entire population. The shooting at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs was only one of two church shootings in America yesterday. In Fresno, California, an estranged husband shot his wife and her boyfriend as they left a Sunday morning mass. Shooting deaths happen so frequently that we don't even acknowledge or know about most of them. When something like what happened in Las Vegas or in Texas captures the nation's attention, all that we hear from the leaders of Congress and the president is just too soon to talk about it. As though it was some sort of breach of etiquette if we understand that these people are gone and are not coming back. That must be an NRA talking point. It seems that the NRA has become more powerful than religion and reason. I'm going to say that it's not too soon to talk about solutions. It is too late for that baby and the other seven members of that family that are dead. It's too late for the families left behind to mourn their losses, but it's not too late to work together to stop these tragic murders. It does not have to be this way. Why don't we require verified background checks for all gun sales? Every indication that we have is this man had no right in the world to have a gun. Why do we let people that we know have mental illnesses buy guns? Why does the federal government prohibit the CDC, the Communal Disease Center, from even researching gun violence? Can't even talk about it. We research vehicle fatalities and try to find ways to reduce them. Then we require manufacturers to create safer cars, and we prohibit people from driving while impaired or distracted. We prohibit speeding. These policies save lives, but we're not even allowed to talk about gun deaths in the United States Congress. And doctors, in the ACA bill was added, are not allowed to ask their patients if there are guns in the home. Over 500 people are unintentionally killed by guns every year. Now, why don't we require the gun manufacturers to only make guns that won't go off if they are accidentally dropped? Why don't we require that new guns can't fire when a magazine is removed, whether or not there is a bullet in the chamber in order to reduce the accidental deaths? Why don't we require manufacturers to make guns that produce bullets traceable not only to the make and model of the gun, but to the exact gun? This would increase the threat of being caught when committing a gun crime and maybe deter some would-be criminals. Why don't we work toward technology that allows guns to only work in the hands of the rightful owner so that stolen guns become useless? Why don't we direct law enforcement to at least check in on people who buy excessive amounts of guns or ammunition like the young man who shot up the theater in Aurora, Colorado? Why don't we direct law enforcement to check in on people who buy excessive amounts of gun and ammunition who have a history of domestic violence and access to guns? Why don't we have a select committee on gun violence in the United States Congress? And good Lord, why have we not yet banned those bump stops and devices like them that could be used in another Vegas-style attack any day of the week? And we're going to spend the bulk of this week debating bills on micro-offerings and hydropower and joint employer rules. Well, that's good, but our citizens are not dying by the thousands because of regulations that balance energy projects and the environment. They are being killed by guns, by people committing crimes, by people who are mentally ill, 
through suicides and through guns going off by accident or guns without gun locks on them in the home. I'll never forget the night, early in the morning, when this Congress banned the use of gun locks for no earthly reason that I know of except the NRA wanted it done. When are we going to take up some legislation to do something, anything, about gun violence in this country? I think it is as much of our part of our job as anything else we do. If people were being killed in large numbers for any other reason, any other reason, believe me, we would be discussing it, we'd be talking about it, it would be all over, and we would do something about it. We did once. We took the automatic rifles off the street for about 10 years and then expired, and we were not able to get it back on. What earthly reason would a hunter want with an automatic gun? None. So this idea of being helpless in the face of this and it being too soon to talk about it, it is way too late.